These are the 20 craziest moments in football history. And first up, this goalkeeper decided to perform a magic trick to distract his opponents before taking a crucial penalty. Can he add to it? Stop by Guzman! actually worked, but it wasn't as crazy as number 19 when Hulk launched an absolute rocket from 40 yards. <laughs> that ball reached a top speed of 67.1 miles per hour, but it wasn't even his hardest shot, because here he hits the woodwork with 70 miles per hour. But his all-time hardest shot was this free kick. 75 miles per hour. I wouldn't want to be that goalkeeper, but I wouldn't want to be up against Messi either, because on his MLS debut, he scored this last-minute beauty. Messi! And that's why he gets paid 60 million a year. And 5% of that goes to his new bodyguard, Yasin Chekuk. This man is a freaking machine. Punching, kicking, hitting, wrestling, crazy takedowns, one hand pull ups, and I don't even know what type of exercise that is. But, anyways, Yasin is an ex Navy SEAL that served in Iraq and Afghanistan. No wonder he can climb ropes and take punches like this. But instead of pursuing a fighting career, he chose to earn $7 a minute, $405 an hour, $9,700 a day, $291,000 a month, and a whopping $3.5 million a year. But his job isn't easy, because ever since Leo joined Miami, he has been swarmed with crazy fans who want a taste of him. Jesus, he's fast. And so is Mertens. Kerem yaptı ortayı, cezalarını dışına What a screamer! But number 15 was pure skill. Que a perspectiva realmente uma boa uma boa época, claro que está tudo muito no princípio, mas parece-me que que as soluções são fortes. Ninguém para o Giovanni Kenda. O que vai fazer Giovanni Kenda? That run was impressive. It so was Speed's career, because not only did he link up with the best player of all time and tackled the biggest YouTuber in the world, he also had a chance to put himself in the history books, and so did Alan Smith. They all sat down, the gentlemen in orange jackets, facing the crowd. Risa. Because he might have blocked that ball, but while doing so, he managed to break his own leg and dislocate his ankle. Von der Sar panicked. Ronaldo couldn't watch, and medics had to carry him off on a stretcher. He never fully recovered after that, and neither did FC Rockcheck. Because during the 2023-2024 preseason, they linked up with Bayern Munich for a friendly game. And since these guys are literal amateurs, they thought it would be fun to be around their idols on the pitch. But Bayern players had different plans. See it up now. Jamal Musiala, and there is the opening goal. Musiala now finding Davies. It's cut back to Gnabry. 2-0. They're going to put him to the sword again. And still Jamal Musiala. Conrad Lima tells strikes. That's how he strikes, and it's a good strike as well for the hat-trick now. Ouch. 10-0 must hurt, but Bayer didn't slow down. All second attempt is there. Teed up for Matisse Tell. The B goal number 13 now and goes for the square ball. Oh, the dancing feet to find Matisse Tell in Jamal Musiala. He's on for a fifth, but he goes to find Gnabry instead. He's done so well to find Musiala. Round the keeper for his fifth. And they with a first goal of the second half. Knocks around the corner for Mane. Bayern finally have goal number 20. Come on, 20 zeros is brutal. And they eventually scored seven more. I don't think these guys should quit their day job just yet. But did you know that Mario Balotelli almost became a pig breeder? Let me explain. Everyone knows Super Mario is a bit of a lunatic. Crazy haircuts, provocative celebrations, and much more. But during his season at Milan in 2013, he surprised the internet once again when he introduced his new pet, Super the Pig, named after himself, obviously. And strangely enough, the pig seemed to be his good luck charm. He scored one one goal after the other, and Milan fans were happy with him. But besides his success in Italy, Mario wanted to put his skills to the test one last time in the Prem. So when Liverpool came knocking, he immediately hopped on a flight to the UK. But it wasn't just Milan that Balotelli was leaving behind, because his pig was not allowed to enter Britain unless he registered himself as a breeder. Mario was heartbroken and did everything he could to get his pink buddy across the border. But the 
the UK government wouldn't give in and all this drama heavily affected his performance on the pitch. He didn't manage to find the net in his first 12 games for the Reds. And even the media started speculating that Mario couldn't score without his pink friend by his side. So after only one very disappointing season at Liverpool, with just one goal to his name, he was sent back on loan to Milan where he was reunited with Super. But we've made it to the top 10. So we've got some of the craziest moments you'll ever see coming up. And we're kicking it off with this gorgeous kick. Grandeada pelo Wendel. O Luca vai esperando, controlou. Chapéu, mandou o golaço! That goalie had no chance. And neither do the goalies that face Ronaldo Jr. Because even though he's only 12 years old, he's already played in Real's, United's, Juventus, and now Al Nasser's Youth Academy. With all of that experience and his father's magical DNA flowing through his veins, this kid can't do anything but score. as beautiful as that bicycle kick might have been, it's a lot harder to do it in an actual game. They've got a shot. Phil Kanye. Good to see. And the spectacular effort by Brian Fernandez. That's pure skill. But during the 2006 World Cup between Portugal and the Netherlands, it was all about violence. The lineup was incredible. Ronaldo, Figo, Deco, Van Persie, Robin, Schneider, and Van der Sar. But what was expected to be a game full of beautiful goals ended up in a battlefield. One heavy challenge after the other, and Ronaldo was even subbed off after suffering multiple outrageous tackles. But that didn't change anyone's temper, and the players continued tackling each other, resulting in 16 cards, including four reds. That game has gone down in the history books as the Battle of Nuremberg. But one battle that's even crazier is the sign battle that fans are having nowadays. I mean, just look how creative they're getting. This girl is just desperate for Ronaldo's attention. This fellow wants to trade his mom for Messi's shirt. And these two fans are competing to get Salas. But the weirdest sign ever made must have been made for Alvarez. Cause for some reason, the treble and the World Cup winner ended up giving away his shorts? Like what the heck was on that sign? I just gotta know. And I also need to know who this kid is. Well, damn, he dribbles like Messi, but I don't think he's got the shooting power just yet. Uh-oh, playing on Messi, around Zimmerman, Messi! Holy sh... <laughs> he keeps surprising me. But not all moments in this video are as wholesome, because what Kirk Zuma did shocked the entire world. In the case of Kurt Zuma, it was the kicking of the cat in the abdomen and slapping it in the head. And the fact he tricked his cat like that and his brother's filming it and he thinks it's all okay, that is really upsets me, actually. Yeah, the once so beloved West Ham defender found himself in really hot water after a clip of him kicking his own cat emerged online. His reputation changed overnight. He pleaded guilty for abusing his cats, was given 180 hours of community service, and a 9,000 pound fine. On top of that, Adidas dropped their partnership. West Ham also fined him 250,000 pounds, and both his cats were taken away from him. And despite him apologizing multiple times, Zuma's reputation is destroyed forever, but Cristiano Ronaldo's is better than ever after he saved a boy's life without even realizing. Let me explain. Ronaldo just scored a winner against Serbia, but the ref denied the goal, which made Ronaldo really angry. He was done with the game, walked off the field, threw his armband on the ground, and just left the stadium. To everyone, this seemed like another one of Ronaldo's outbursts, but one man knew the value of that armband. He managed to get his hands on it and flip it for $75,000. But instead of icing out a watch or getting a fat chain, he wanted to save someone's life. A six-month-old boy from Serbia who was suffering from a rare disease whose only hope for survival was a six-figure surgery, and that's exactly what he did. He donated every single penny to the family, covering all the kids' medical bills, so the next time Ronaldo leaves an accessory around, make sure to pick it up. But we finally made it to the craziest moment in football history, the day an amateur player lied and convinced Southampton he was a pro player and made his debut in the Premier League. Meet Ali Dia. 
This striker from Senegal has been on the cover of countless newspapers all around the world. Back in 1996, Southampton coach Grammy Souness received a call from George Weah, a legendary Milan striker who had just won the Ballon d'Or. He told him about his talented cousin, Ali Dia. Played with George Weah at Paris Saint-Germain and last year he was playing in the second division in Germany. And um, we, we said come down and train with us for a week or so and see see what's what, so we're looking. And that's what happened. A young kid from Senegal with no professional football experience whatsoever joined an official Premier League team. He claimed to have played for the Senegal national team just a few days before flying to the UK. He even scored two goals, he said. The Southampton coach was convinced, grabbed his pen and paper, offered him a contract, and a couple days later, Ali Diaz strapped up his boots to make his official debut in a stadium filled with thousands of fans. Dia played 53 minutes that day and even managed to launch a shot on goal. But in the 85th minute, Rami Sunis realized Dia ran around the pitch like Bambi on ice and subbed them off. His performance raised eyebrows, but Dia stuck to his story. He told me that George ring him and uh, said that I'm a good player. I'm, I'm not afraid to tell that I'm a good player. I can prove that. I, I'm going to prove that. So George Weir did ring Graham Sunis? Personally, like I told you, I don't really know. But the lie wouldn't last much longer, and people found out he actually played for Blythe Spartan, a tiny club struggling in the sixth league. Next thing I knew, uh, I was watching him on match of the day and watched him playing for Southampton, which was, you know, pretty unbelievable at the time. So yeah, with 53 minutes of playtime on the highest level in the whole world knowing you lied yourself into Southampton, Dia pulled a Houdini and disappeared from the spotlights. It's been a mystery where he's gone ever since.